Again, welcome to DSRT 734 class. This lectures cover data classification. Our main objective is to discuss the difference between qualitative data and quantitative data. We're also going to classify data with respect to the four levels of measurements. So qualitative data normally consists of attributes, labels, or non-numerical entries. So in qualitative data, we cannot perform arithmetic operations except counting. So again, an example would be a major place of birth, high clinic, or eye color, uh, last name. Again, any data that consists of non-numerical entries. Again, the only arithmetic operation we can perform, again, is counting. The next is quantitative data. Now with quantitative data, we can perform an arithmetic operations such as multiplication, addition, division, etc. So a quantitative data is a numerical measurement or count. Example can be an age of a person, weight of a letter, or a temperature of the weather. Now let's start with example, classified data by type. Here we say a base price of several vehicles are shown in the table below. Which data are qualitative data and which are quantitative? So we can look at the base prices. We can see that all the prices again are values, quantitative. And the models, they are labels, names. So they will be qualitative. So let's see the result. So here we say the models are qualitative data because they are names of a vehicle models. They are not numerical. Again, they are non-numerical entries. And the base price, again, will be quantitative data because base prices of a ve vehicle models are numerical entries. We can perform arithmetic op operations. The next will be the level of measurements. The nominal level, we have four types of level of measurements of data. And the first one will be the nominal level of measurement. Then we have the ordinal level. Then we have a ratio and interval. So first, let's start with the nominal level of measurement. A nominal level of measurement will be a qualitative data entries. Normally it's categorized using names, labels, or qualities. So this means a nominal level of data, we cannot perform an arithmetic operation except counting. So no mathematical computations can be made. Next is the ordinal level of measurement. Now, ordinal level of measurement can be qualitative or quantitative. So data can be arranged in order. Actually, that's the main keyword here. The ordinal level of measurement, the data can be arranged in order. For example, we have a NBA league or the baseball league. We can say number one is Yankee. Number two is Boston, so this are in order. Or a grade, a score of a test. Uh, you score A, B, C, or it can be 90%, 20%, etc. So again, the main keyword of ordinal level of measurements is data can be arranged in order. Now, the differences between the data entry is not meaningful. So example, in qualitative, we can say the size of a shirt can be much more. Uh, or minimal or extra large or any, again, this means we are using the term qualitative. So let's see some example here, classify data by level. Here we have two data sets shown in the two tables here. The first one is the top five TV programs from February 12, 2007 to February 18, 2007. So we have the five top TV programs. On our right side, we have Network Affiliate in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Those are four. Now we said that which data set consists of data at the ordinal level. So we can see the top five, they are in order. So again here, ordinal level is the least the rank of five TV programs. Because here we say the top five TV programs, so they are in order. Now with the network affiliate in Pittsburgh, it's not in order. 
but still there are levels. So this would be a nominal level. So a nominal level lists the call letters of each network affiliate. The call letters are names of network affiliates. But the first one again is ordinal level because it's top five TV programs in order. So the next will be the interval level of measurement. Now interval level of measurement is a quantitative data. So the data also can be ordered. Now the difference between data entries is meaningful. With ordinal data, the difference is not meaningful. So example, it says zero represents a position on a scale, but not inherit zero. Zero does not imply none. So example would be the temperature of the weather can be zero, but zero means it's very cold. But now if my bank balance account is zero, it means I don't have no money. So that's not interval level of measurement. A bank balance will be the ratio, which will be our next level of measurement. So again, the interval level of measurement, data must be quantitative. Data can be put in order. Now the difference between the data entry is meaningful. And also zero represents a position on a scale. A good example would be, again, the weather temperature. If it's zero, it means it's very cold. And the last one will be the ratio level of measurement. This is similar to interval level, but zero entry is an inherent zero, implies none. So example, if my weight, body weight is zero, it means I don't exist. Or my bank account again is zero, it means I don't have no money. So a weight of a person is a ratio level of measurement. So a ratio of data, two data values can be formed which means we can do multiplication, division, et cetera. And one data value can be expressed as a multiple of other, another. So example is given here, we should classify the data by level. Two data sets are shown, which data set consists of data at the interval level, and also which data consists of data at ratio level. So remember again, both of them are quantitative. The, but the major difference is, Again, with ratio, zero means nothing. With interval, zero means something. And also the ordinal order, data can be in order. So let's see the first one. We have a New York Yankee World Series victories in years. And also 2003 National League home run total by team. So here we say that again, New York Yankee World Series victory in years. It's an interval data, it's interval level. It's a quantitative data, but can a difference between two dates be a ratio does not make sense. And that's one of the condition is interval. We cannot say the difference between two or even the ratio between two year. It doesn't make no sense. But 2003 National League home run total by team. Again, this are the home run total by team. Here we can have a ratio, a division, multiplication, division, uh, et cetera. So this is a ratio level, can find differences and also write the ratios. So we summarize again, all the four level of measurements. And again, the first is the nominal. As we said, the nominal is a qualitative data. So we put data in categories. We can arrange data in order, no. We can supply data values, no. We can determine if one value is multiple of another, no. Because why? Uh, level of measurement for nomina is only qualitative data. The labels, names, etc. With ordinary data, we can also put the data in categories, yes. We can arrange the data in order, yes. Because it's ordinary data. But can we software data values? No. Can we determine if one value? Can we determine if one value is multiple of another? No. Now with the interval data, as we said, we can put the data in category. We can arrange the data in order. We can subtract data values, but we cannot do ratio or multiplication of which. Then the ratio is everything. So here we can see that from nominal, 
we can only put data in category, but when we go to ordinal, we can do the same thing that we can do in nominal, including arranging data in order. Then interval can do everything ordinal do, including subtracting the values. Then ratio can do everything. In ratio, we can do everything. So that will be the conclusion of these lectures. Again, these lectures, we go through the concept of data classification and see you in the next lectures. Thank you.